Welcome. The Derby, the Kazoo Derby, is on Saturday. And we've had dramatic news very much recently. Aidan O'Brien likely to only run Bolshoi Ballet and Frankie Dottori on John Leeper. The Derby story, Seb, has very much opened up in the last 24, 48 hours. And we can only really start with the fact that Aidan O'Brien is likely to rely on just Bolshoi Ballet. Yeah. Some people will say, because they say the opposite when he has lots of runners, that he has no idea. Some people will say, well, they just know that Bolshoi Ballet is so far the best at Cornwall, they only need one runner. How would you look at it? Look, you can't be any more impressed with him as you were, as he was in his, his trial. Is he the real deal? I, I think he could be. Um, the, the horse that I feel is the most likely one to serve it up to him is Max Sweeney, because he's got Guinea's form. Um, and that's probably as good a trial as, as any, Matt. There's Max Sweeney in picture. Yeah. Battling against Poetic Flair. Max Sweeney in the greyish colours on this yeah. occasion, of course, was the second colours of Jim Bolger. I'm an always believer. I know this horse has got a big shoulder, so you'd sort of be a, a wee bit worried about the track. I'm always a believer they'll always act once on the quicker ground. But also, good horses, Matt, tend to be good actioned horses. So they'll, they'll handle any surface, basically. This is the race that was once called the Racing Post Trophy, yeah. now, of course, the Vertem Futurity. Yeah. Um, Max Sweeney in the poetic flare colours here, battling on for one ruler. Yeah. Um, just on this, you could argue that one ruler shouldn't be a 33 to one shot, having just run in the guineas. Yeah. If Max Sweeney is a five, six, seven, eight to one shot. Um, I think if you were to compare both guineas, it'd be really difficult because we're the, on, on two different grounds. But you, you'd have to put uh, poetic flare uh, in there. Um, Obviously, one rule is definitely going to improve, but he's got to prove that he stays, Matt. And for me, he was he was keen enough in the Guineas, um, and he's going to have to settle quite quickly in the Derby if he's going to stay a mile and a half. Okay, let's talk about John Leeper. The big news was yeah. the jockey booking. Yeah, Frankie de Tory on. Yeah, Adam Kirby off because Frankie was going to ride High Definition, having turned down. John Leeper for high definition. Um, many will be feeling for Adam Kirby, quite rightly. Yep. But at the end of the day, Dittori not being in this race would seem a very odd thing, I guess. For me, that I, I, it's not the case. I mean, you either book for the horse or not. Um, does it up the profile of the derby if Frank is riding it? Well, I tend not to think so. I think the derby's the derby. Um, but... It's it's great. He's got a ride in the race. Um, is John Lepper good enough? Leeper. Leeper, sorry. John Lepper. Lepper, yeah, <laughs> sorry. OK, it all takes right. Takes on a whole new meaning. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. Remember, yeah. most of the family yeah. have the word Lepper in them. Yeah, OK. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, look, he, he's done nothing wrong. He's on the upgrade. Um, if you just feel that this is probably, uh, you know, a race too soon for him, really. You, you, he's, I, I bet Ed, uh, Ed Dunlop is, is wishing he got he, he could get another run into him before the derby. He's into just about second favourite now. Yeah. Partly, of course, to do with the Tatori factor yes. as much as anything. Yeah. Um, but he's by Frankel. Yeah. Out of Snow Fairy. Yeah. Snow Fairy and Oaks winner. Yeah. Frankel, arguably the greatest flat horse has ever been, who didn't run in the Derby but won the Guineas and of yeah. course became a, a top horse over a mile and a quarter. Arguably one of the most impressive Jumpmont International winners ever. Yeah. Stamina's not going to be an issue. Yeah. He could just have the genes to be good enough, couldn't he? It's got the genes. Um, it's, it's whether he, he can perform it on the day. I, I, I just tend to feel that there'll be a lot of positives to come out of the race. For him, it's, I, I'm not sure he's, he's going to be good enough come Saturday. I, I, I think it's a race too soon for him. Yeah. OK. And um, I want to talk about Mohafef. Yes. Who is also by Frankel. Yes. But for me, injects a different type of Frankel gene. Yeah. Like, John Leeper's got the stamina side of Frankel, and Frankel's can stay two miles and yeah. go hurdling and all sorts. Mohafef 
appears to have, for me, a little bit more Frankel in him. In yeah. that when he actually won at Newmarket last time against substandard opposition, admittedly, there was something Frankel-esque about Mohafef. It was just... It looks slick. You say it was substandard, but the I think it was the second or third also was rated over 100, Matt, so it, it wasn't as substandard as you think. He's, he's a, a very, very talented horse. Um, and my only worry was when he hit the line at, at Newmarket was, can he get much further? Because he didn't gallop out like he was full of running. And I know Jim took it very easy on him for the last furlong. But for me, I, I, I wasn't enamoured with the way he galloped out in that race. I, 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 li I love the way he won. I think he's a, a very talented horse. I was ju I'm just a wee bit worried about the trip. Yeah. Just a quick word on third realm and Hurricane Lane. Yeah. We've got the Dante winner. Yeah. Third realm, the Linkfield Derby trial here, live on Sky Sports Racing. Could we produce another winner from that race at Epsom? No reason why not. I, lo I love. Uh, I really like third realm. I think he's he's is a. He's a lovely, compact horse, mm. um, quickened up really well at Lingfield. On ground, that's probably on the slow side for him, to be fair. Um, I think he's going to be there or thereabouts. Can't get it into my, out of my head, I should yeah. say, that Atzini went to Ascot that day. Mm. And I know that this horse obviously took them by surprise. It was the outside of the whole field. But yeah. just, just the fact he went to Ascot that day, if this was a worldie at home, he would never have gone but to Ascot. He, yeah, you know, look... Some of the best horses I rode were not worldies in the morning. And they're the best ones because they save all the energy for race day, for when they're in the stalls. Um, and for me, he's, he's a horse I think will settle quite quickly off any pace, early doors. And, and the whole key to, to winning the Classic at Epsom is, is the first four furlongs in switching off. You can't win, you can't win an Oaks or a Derby in the first, first four furlongs, but you can lose it and you are an Oaks winning jockey. Um, let's have a look at the draw. They say, and obviously the size of the field yeah. is very dependent on this, but they say you don't want very low, i.e. one, yeah. and you don't want high. Ten is the, is the draw most people want to come from. The most winners in the derby have come from stall ten. Um, so that's... The, it's fairly... When you look at that, Seb, it's fairly categoric, isn't it? I mean, 7 to 14, you, but most of I've it got, is in the I've middle. Got, I've got a theory for this. Is it in the fact that the derby is... is you start on a right-handed bend. Yeah. And the horses, middle to high, will all get cover and relaxed easier than the horses drawn low, who have to go wide round that first turn. And when they switch across, Matt, and you, you'll see it, on Friday in the Oaks and on Saturday in the Derby, you'll always get one or two think, oh, go and pinch a, a, a position as they switch back to the uh, left-handed onto the inside of the track. And that, does, that lights them up. And they, those horses are finished. The moment that that's done, race over because you've used up energy at the wrong part of the race on an uphill. It's a really interesting caption, that, though, because if you just yeah. forgot about the horses... Yes and took that caption into account. You would not go with horses one to two. You would not go with horses right at the high yeah. end. Well, um, I, think, I think the biggest gap there was seven, I counted there. Has, Harzand was drawn nine out, out of 16, but he's still middle to high, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, We've got 14 out of 18 wings of eagles high, yeah. but that, in some ways, you could say was a horse that no-one considered in the race. They just ignored Yeah, but he followed the favourite round, didn't yeah. he? I'm trying to think what, what, was, what Ryan was on that year. 2017. Um, Wings of Eagles. Mm. It was a, it, it, it was a strange derby. I'm not sure if you can take that as a classic example, but still, yeah. for me, that caption um, is think, absolutely key as far as if if you just didn't know the horses, yeah, and you decided I'd just look at the draw. It's all there, isn't it? It's well, I mean, a lot of the derbies I've watched and the Oaks I've watched, a lot of the winners when they're coming down Tattenham. Tatnam Corner, they're actually they're, they're probably three, four wide, Matt, yeah. and and staying out of the trouble that on on the inside. Cliff Samoa was the horse, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, Cliff Samoa. Cliff Samoa, that's right. But yeah. to be honest, Cliff Samoa was held up in that race, but there must have been something that that whizzed round, probably.
No, he followed Cliff Samoa. I'm yeah, sure. all the way around the yeah. bat. They were both out the bat, weren't yeah. they? That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Venice Beach was one of those on the front end that day. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think they've pretty much got the betting right. Um, Horse, I think, is a value each way. I think his third realm. I mean, one we're all at, I think, has got the ability. It just, just, you'd like to have a bet on him after two furlongs, Matt, to see how he runs the t first two furlongs, because for me, he's got to be switched off quite quickly. I mean, Hurricane Lane. You could make a case case for him. He's he's unbeaten. He's done nothing wrong. Um, was the Dante a good trial? Um, we'll probably say it is if he wins. But at the moment, it's uh, jury's out. Okay. So just if would you want to give us a one, two, three? My one, two. This could be your your Sky Sports <laughs> crowning moment. So this is this is a clip that you can play forever if you get this right. If I get this right. Yeah. I, I, I like Bol Bol Bolshoi Valley for me, I think. Number one? Number one. OK, that's fine. No, look, in handicaps and things like that, I think as tipsters and pundits, people, go, you know, go away from the favourite yeah. or whatever. There's a five-to-one favourite for a handicap. They try and go... But I think in group ones, like the Derby yeah. and Champion Hurdle and the Gold Cup, um, uh, the Arc, if you think the favourite is just going to be the winner, you've got to go with the... Yeah. If you think Bolshoi Valley is the best... I have no problem with you tipping to favourite. I'd never no. take the mickey. And I like Mick Swinney. I think, you know, I'd put him down as my number two. Okay. And I'd put third round down as number four. Number okay. three, sorry. I, um, he's, I, I think those, those three tick a lot of boxes. OK, well, luckily we have some very fast typers <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> and amazingly, they've even spelt the words correctly. Bolshoi Bally, six to five. Max Swinney at 13 to two. And third realm at 14 to 1. That, if you did the try cost, would pay very nicely if it came in. Um, the Oaks, you got an opinion on the Oaks? Oaks, I, I, I like Santa Barbara. Um, I'm all over her. I think she's going to absolutely. I think hang she's, up. She, she, she looked very, very classy at Newmarket. Um, obviously. She's not short either. No. No, I mean, the worry for me would be if she's a bit, she gets a bit on the metal, gets a bit keen. I think she's a, a, a real strong traveller. I love Zayada. Mm. I think I think the Cheshire Oaks was a real good race. And I like the, the horse that beat her in the Cheshire Oaks, um, uh, Dubai... Fountain. Fountain. Mark Johnson. Mark Johnson. Yeah. I, I, I think those two will definitely be on the premises. If Santa Barbara turns up, I think she'll take a hell of a lot of beating. Tell you what, look, they've done it again. Look, Santa Barbara, wow. five to two. That's a big price, isn't it? Slightly yeah. worrying you. This will be a fascinating race as far as betting on the day is concerned. Yeah. Because that if, means, if my... the lads smash this, yeah. it could be a free faller before the off. Like it go five to nine to four, two, seven yeah, to four, yeah, six yeah, to four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the lads smash it and they yeah. just think it's a monster. Well, believe it or not, before they had a run at Chester. I was in here and I, I tipped her up, tipped her, tipped her up, and she was thirty-three for the Oaks. 33 to 1. Um, she, she looks a very talented filly. And I, I had a nice chat with Richard Hills this morning and he was he was fairly bullish about her. He said she'd come on really well for the, for the run at Chester. Um, but um, I, d I do like the winner at Chester as well. I think I think she's a real nice filly. Yeah. If Santa Barbara wasn't in the race, I'd definitely be with her. But, yeah. but I just think Santa's going to be different gravy. So that's the former champion jockey, Seb Sanders, expert pundit here on Sky Sports Racing. He, of course, you're British, aren't you? You're British? <laughs> Why do I look something else? Well, you could be anything. You, you can't be too careful these days. <laughs> you're British, aren't you? Of course I am. Through. British through and through, but an Irish winner of the Oaks and an Irish winner of the Derby. Thanks, Seb.